Morning all. You're in for a treat. <laughs> I have been given 20 new unseen games from Alpha Zero. This has great implications for the Leela Chess project. I feel it should be very interesting to check out these games one by one. I will try and cover all 20. <laughs> this is the first game given. Uh, so th the first 10 games I'm about to show you are from the main chess match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, starting from the initial ball position. And then it will be 10 games from the chess match uh, from 2016 TSEC start positions. So very, very exciting set of games here. Let's have a look at this one. Knight f3 from Alpha Zero. Stockfish 8 played Knight f6. c4 e6. We have Knight c3. Bishop b4. Queen c2. Stockfish castles a3. Bishop takes c3. So what can Alpha Zero do with this dark square bishop? The bishop pair has been given to Alpha Zero here and Will it be that dangerous? Let's see. A5, trying to discourage B4, but B4 is played anyway. D6. Black could, it seems, take on B4. This should be okay. It looks okay, potentially. But uh, D6 was played. We have E3. Knight E4. Queen C2. And now Knight G5. Alpha zero plays b5. We have knight takes f3. This does give white a potentially dangerous file now to black's king. And also look at this diagonal. Is there a convergence of pressure here and alignment? And Stockfish plays quite a greedy looking move. Queen f6 going after pawns it seems. So hitting a1 and f3. And alpha zero is clean, keen to sort of oblige. Let black take some pawns to get even more pressure basically on black's king side and plays d4 so gambit territory on bishop b2 this is also potentially okay for white at, at the very least this kind of scenario is potentially okay uh, but uh, d4 was played here offering f3 that's taken rook g1 knight d7 bishop e2 queen f6 bishop b2 now we have queen h4, very, very greedy play from Stockfish, going after h2 here. And alpha zero saying, take my pawns, just rook g4, take my pawns. Queen takes h2, and very, very casually, very, very relaxed, just rook g3, saying, I'm, I'm fine with this position, I don't need to justify my pawn loss to anyone. <laughs> I'm just going to build up more attacking pressure. Uh, and soon to be casting queenside potentially. We have f5 and white indeed castles queenside. You might think, oh, hold on, what about f2 here? Well, rook f7 was played. On queen takes f2, white can double rooks like this, and then this position, the queen's awkwardly placed. Uh, say queen h1 here, rook h2, queen e4, and it continues to be quite dangerous here. Now there's an idea of bishop c2 here. So if uh, some squares are made available to the queen, like this, the queen's gone away. But look at the two rooks and the two bishops here. They look as though they're up to something. Uh, despite the pawn loss, well, e4 here, for example, this position looks very dangerous after c5 opening up this diagonal as well potentially and it seems as though black can get into severe trouble for example this scenario is showing that black's position starts creaking and white ends up being much better so incredible stuff uh, there's a real backfire there from all that pressure uh, which the pawn sacrifices help create so we have rook f7 actually not the super greedy queen takes f2 <laughs> Bishop f3, which protects now, of course, f2, and supports rook h1. So the queen makes a run for it out of there. Queen h4, rook h1, queen f6. Ready to answer d5 here with e5. So we have actually a super casual move, though. King b1. This is just really incredible. Just playing this, like, positional gambit. 
and being super super casual with it after so uh, pardon me. we have g6 rook gg1 a4 king a1 just tucking the king into the corner very safe there rook g7 and now e4 finally uh, an ambition to open up position f4 is played trying to keep things closed if f takes e4 bishop takes e4 this is very dangerous for example queen f7 bishop c1 if d5 bishop d3 this looks as though white's got incredible pressure here for example this position after d5 opening up this diagonal black starting to crack here so we have black trying to close keep the position closed c5 queen e7 now rook c1 so white is actually playing on the queen side now and kind of cramping and look at this potentially creating dangerous end game assets at the same time as this middle game pressure so playing on both sides of the board here quite beautifully knight f6 and now e5 opening up this bishop but not wanting to close this bishop the idea here is just another pawn sack another gambit with rook h e1 <laughs> it's it's unbelievable stuff uh, so alpha zero is not too concerned about losing a whole load of pawns if there's a ton of uh, pressure on the king side and on the queen side as there is here as a kind of crossfire of pressure in fact uh, to play d takes e5 is helping black after knight d5 keeping things uh, closed for example b6 c6 black might be actually okay uh, might be able to hold here but that really wasn't the intention the intention is just play rook to the center here putting even more pressure on black so these two rooks and two bishops are just being fed a load of coordination alignments attacking pressure a lot of things are being given to them just casually not not needing to justify other than their seemingly active aggressive pressure and coordination we have e4 giving a pawn back bishop takes e4 but now not taking the bishop queen f8 on knight takes e4 queen takes e4 this is very very dangerous for things like d5 which would open up this amazing bishop on this diagonal if c6 d5 anyway c takes queen d4 and this position with with queen side play as well <laughs> crashing through with this for example this is just very dangerous for black this is just absolutely uh, advantageous to white so brilliant scenarios here on knight takes e4 it just seems as though blacks extra material doesn't mean anything so queen f8 we have d5 opening up this bishop e takes and now yeah just bishop d3 it seems as though the activity is justifying all the material all the time at least from an alpha zero perspective so if we do a pawn count three four one two three four five six seven so <laughs> only four pawns down then three pawns down three four one two three four five six seven three pawns down bishop g4 but wanting to go four pawns down with f3 here if bishop takes f3 then this really simply backfires with rook f1 rook takes f4 on f6 with a pins knight and here just massive alignment on f6 is unbearable for black here this would be enough winning a piece back to justify everything for example this continuation white's just better with a big advantage so okay three pawns down f3 bishop d7 kicking the bishop back now queen c3 some alignment on the diagonal and a nice blockade square on d4 knight h5 we have rook e5 white is also wanted to control now the e-file it seems c6 protecting the d-pawn 
Rook C E1. In this critical position, you might think about the move Rook E8, trying to parry White's pressure. It seems that White can actually play casually Rook takes E8, and then B6 just locking up things. And also, this pawn is also pretty dangerous. Sometimes there's even uh, resources like Bishop A6 available for that pawn to crash through. So Black's got to be very careful about things like that now. Uh, and for example, Bishop D7, Queen E5, Black's pretty helpless here. Let's see, Bishop C8, Bishop D4, and Black's in a kind of, it's kind of a positional zugzwang basically. So the Rook can never move because of Queen H8 check usually. Uh, King F7, for example, there's Queen D6, just very casually Queen D6, clawing into the dark squares even more. Queen takes, C takes, and Black's pretty helpless here. Check, that wins the bishop. If we have a look at this again, and look at some other variations here after B6, Bishop D7, Queen E5. This position again, if we have Queen D8, then just Queen E8 check, and then that picks up the bishop. Uh, if we look at Queen D6 again, what about King G8, you might ask? Then just Bishop takes, and then Rook E7. This is enough uh, for White to have a big advantage. So yeah, it's all pretty crushing after this in this position, this scenario. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing stuff. So it seems the natural trying to parry the e file is just impossible in this particular situation. Knight f6, which supports things like rookie eight, it seems queen d4, but here c takes b5 is played. It turns out rookie eight in this position to try and extinguish some of white's attacking pieces can actually be answered with rook takes e8, and after knight takes e8, incredibly b6, and this sets the queen side on fire as well as the king side because now there's a latent threat of bishop a6 with b7 on that side of the board black's totally uh tied up in knots here for example rook f7 there's queen h8 checkmate knight f6 we just take that bishop c8 we take on e8 we'll be mating with queen takes g7 h5 is an example then there's bishop a6 <laughs> it's just incredible and again if bishop c8 here then rook takes e8 yeah it's all coming together here quite well uh it's all crashing through on b6 believe it or not uh so this position if taking b7 and the pawn screening <laughs> it's just incredible stuff but um yeah so c takes b5 now we are uh white is how many pawns now? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So white is actually four pawns down here. <laughs> but now bishop just drops back, saying, I want this diagonal. D5 has been weakened. And it does seem logical to tap into that newfound weakness after C takes that D5 square. So we have bishop C6 on rook C8. There's rook takes d5, for example, this. There's queen d4, queen d6, and white is going to be much better after bishop a2, pinning the queen. And note from the earlier, the king moves to a1. It makes sense now for this bishop to have access uh, freely for the bishop to maneuver like this. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> was that an accident or was that planned? So, um, Bishop c6, we have rook e6, hitting the knight, that's defended for a moment. On knight h5 here, then bishop a2, that's also weakening in a way d5, moving the knight away from d5. So for example, rook d8, here, this position, white is making inroads very nicely. For example here, with rook d6, pretty casual stuff. And black ends up cracking, basically. There's just too much pressure. White ends up with a big advantage. So uh, rook f7. We have rook g1. Queen g7. Queen takes f4. Rook e8. 
and very casually just playing rook d6 so keeping that pin and letting in fact black unpin with the tactical knight d7 so hitting the queen here the queen just drops back alpha zero has got another intention now to create even more horrendous pressure so at the moment the queen attacked we have the move rook f6 uh, there's all sorts of nasties if if anything else like bishop takes g6 coming uh, for black it's king uh, so rook f6 but now still this pawn structure is under great scrutiny after the move f4 yeah despite being material down just playing this casual f4 just to say I'm going to undermine the pawn chain around your king now. Queen e7, rook takes f6, knight takes, and now just f5. Black's king is getting slaughtered here. Stockfish realizes this and has to do something pretty desperate, a concession. Plays queen e3 uh, to try and get the queens off. On king g7, for example, then f takes h6. Bishop d4 is really strong stopping any queen e3 as well uh, under certain cases and now rook h1 hitting h6 queen f4 and it just gets black gets tied up in knots in this variation for example rook e1 rook e6 and this scenario getting a nasty pin here with the bishop supporting g6 is unbearable for black yeah black's going to get mated if king g8 there's queen h7 so here this is just crashing through yep <laughs> so queen e3 now this lets white cash out into a piece up after takes check well double check from the rook and the pawn and now rook takes c1 and now knight takes h7 yeah black having to give up material because things like rook f1 on the cards uh, so a bishop up and let's see the technique now of alpha zero so that third rank a, a bridge is being built soon for that third rank for the king to come to c3 to try and invade actually quite nicely the black's position on dark squares where the bishop isn't so again where black is quite vulnerable the white king will walk king b4 now and now the king comes in bishop e5 here rook d3 pairing a3 threat king b6 now ramping up the pressure but here actually it's uh, adjudicated as a win for white let's see if the game continued so the game ended here if rook g2 just rook e3 for example this position b5 is going to be dropping and that's going to be it really pretty simple after that white's got a big advantage clearly uh so yeah a, a remarkable game i'll be putting um yeah if you enjoyed this game then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chasmol.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check the analysis of this game and other Alpha Zero games in advance uh, from the improved menu learn from the Masters YouTube order button. So you'll start to see the PGNs as I do these videos there as well in the analysis. Amazing stuff. Comments, questions, donations, see the description, like, share, subscribe with the no notification bell. All appreciated. Also check out the new T Teespring store. Okay, in the description. Thanks very much. Really exciting times. Uh, I'll see you in the next video pretty soon. Thanks again.